Hello and welcome to the Booktopia Facebook page where this morning I am talking to well one famous human and two very famous dogs. Uh, my name is Kate Lever. I'm a journalist. Um, I'm Australian which you can probably hear from my voice but I'm currently in London um, in the same time zone as Andrew. Um, the reason I'm qualified to talk about dogs um, is because I've written my own book um, Good Dog which is about um, the dogs that change and save our lives and stars uh, this little creature, Bertie, um, who is, uh, you know, the true love of my life. Um, <laughs> uh, so, but to introduce the more important guests for the evening's um, events, Andrew Cotter has had an illustrious career as a sports broadcaster, mainly for the BBC. Um, I noticed yesterday his Wikipedia, Wikipedia page has been updated, though, um, to include dogs as one of the sports that he commentates. <laughs> so it's usually things like golf and rugby, as well as tennis. And I believe he was booked in to do the Olympics, um, but the world had other plans. <laughs> um, but this year, if you basically, if you have an internet connection um, and you have a little bit of affection for dogs, you're probably aware of two Labradors um, who became famous during lockdown times earlier this year. They're currently in screen, Olive, the black Labrador there, and Mabel, the yellowy Labrador, Labrador both being uh, receiving bribery to be stars um, today. Uh, so basically, Andrew took his commentating skills that he has honed over many years as a professional journalist and um, applied them to the finest of sports, which is eating breakfast, um, sharing a toy, and ultimately doing a Zoom meeting uh, between, between these two fine athletes that you see before you today. And of course, that led to a book. When you get more than 50, 50 million views online across those several different videos, that, you know, book publishers start ringing amongst all sorts of other people, which we will hear about later. So I just finished this wonderful book called Olive, Mabel and Me, which is out with text publishing in Australia and New Zealand, as well as around the world. Um, I'll just pop that up so you can see the beauties on a mountain, which we will also hear more about. Uh, it's available from booktopia.com.au with the hosts of this wonderful chat today. Uh, there's a link, I believe, in the description of this event if you want to click on that. Um, Otherwise, as I say, the Booktopia website, they're an absolute delight to work with and they'll come to you even if you're staying at home. So after that long ramble, Andrew, welcome. Mabel, Olive, welcome. <laughs> uh, hello. Thank you, Kate. Um, yes. Uh, I mean, people don't want to see me. They just want to see Mabel's decided to rest <laughs> her head there. Olive is just waiting for more biscuits, looking up at me adoringly. You think it's adoringly. It's not. It's just greedily. So there you are. Hello. I know. Here we are. So yes, um, good morning. I apologise. I got a slightly more gravelly um, voice than normal because I, I, I only got in about four hours ago. I was driving through the night um, from a bit of a rare bit of uh, work. So that was nice. Oh. But um, yeah, so it's uh, it's it's all a bit strange here at the moment, as you know. You're over in the in the UK now, but um, heading into lockdown again. But as long as I can yeah. do this with the domed head of a Labrador, then things will be all right. <laughs> Oh, absolutely. I mean, as long my dog's a bit smaller, as you saw, but as long as I can put him on my chest and he puts his little head here, um, it's, it's the best comfort in the world. So tell me about how this all began, this mad journey of becoming an internet sensation. It was earlier this year. Unfortunately, some of your work um, was not exactly pandemic friendly. <laughs> I'd say I'd say all of it. None of my work was pandemic yeah. friendly. So, um, like like for a lot of people, I suppose that their normal jobs just disappeared. So I'm just gonna have half a Mabel dome in shot. I'm like the worst, uh, the worst Bond villain ever. It's just uh, <laughs> who'd be afraid of this Bond villain? Uh, James Bond would just go, well, this is this is of no concern to me whatsoever. You have a, <laughs> I mean, uh, that's an inoffensive Labrador. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I expect you to. Um, I expect you to bring biscuits, Mr. Bond. Um, <laughs> no, it was. Um, yeah, back at the beginning of March, all my work disappeared. Uh, normal work, and uh, you, you know, it was um, a lot. Of, sorry, I'm slightly put off by Mabel here. Um, 
Yes, yeah, so it was the end of Six Nations rugby. It was the the Masters golf, it was Wimbledon, the Open Championship, the Olympics, the boat race, London Marathon. I could go on and on listing the events, but I'd start crying at some point. So, uh, you know, as a, as a freelance uh, broadcaster, you you um, you just expect events to happen, and then when they don't happen, suddenly it's very very strange. It's briefly funny, and then it's it's also slightly uh, concerning, stroke terrifying. So um, at the start of March, when all all those sporting events went, I just decided to to say, hey, look at look at how ridiculous this situation is. I have nothing to do, and we're all in this kind of together. It's all a bit bizarre. So here's a sports commentator commentating on his dogs eating, and that was it, really. <laughs> Um, and, you know, it, it led to just this moment of joy, I think, um, in amongst sort of all sorts of anxiety and worry that I think we were all feeling because, you know, so many people lost their jobs or were sort of in a, either in a state of like overwhelming busyness if they had children as well as full-time work or suddenly there was silence and crickets and tumbleweeds um so obviously you looked to those two beautiful creatures who are your housemates yeah, <laughs> and you it, thought yeah. maybe there's something here you already have quite a quite a back catalog catalog i imagine of videos and photos on your phone anyway would that be right yes uh, yes that would be right but most of them are just sort of uh you know nor normal photos and videos of dogs i mean in, in really nice locations up in the mountains usually that's where i'd spend most of my time with the dogs in normal life so i wouldn't say that my back catalog of videos was was me you know building flat pack furniture with the dogs or, or them doing <laughs> online dating or things like that or having a zoom meeting whatever it might be it's just that i've sort of made them slightly more uh, I've taken them into a, a, um, an alternate reality uh, during this year because why not? Why not? Keeps me entertained and hopefully keeps a few uh, other people we've entertained got an as alternate well. Reality. Yeah. We've got it. But that's but, that, but that's the thing about it as well. Okay, I did it sort of to entertain um, to entertain myself and keep myself occupied. But then you <laughs> see the messages coming back from people and saying how much they have enjoyed them as well. And we've all needed something to laugh about in this year. I mean, it's only in the last few days that, you know, we. I mean, we're going into the winter here, obviously. So, um, you know, wh which can be a pretty dark and oh, right, so get, <laughs> which can be a which can be a pretty dark time at the best of times. But then, but then, um, yeah, it just feels like for the first time there's a bit of light at the end of the of the tunnel. But during this year that we we've, we've been experiencing. We've all needed something to laugh about. And if we can laugh at this kind of thing here. No, it's not. I'm pointing at you. I don't have anything. I'm, po <laughs> I'm pointing at you to make fun of you. So um, I just want to move the microphone closer to you so you can hear her snuffling. So, um, oh, I mean, I, I, sorry. I, I, I know this is one of the characters in my, but I just, I, I do oh, love these dogs. <laughs> I'm um, I should say, you just mentioned getting from messages from someone else, from other people. I should say, I'm not going to be greedy and ask all the questions here. Please, if you're watching this video and you have a question for Andrew, just pop it in the comments and it'll come up and I will feed it through to Andrew as we go through our chat later on. So any question you wish to ask, um, either Andrew or for that matter, Olive or Mabel, I'm sure we can consult them, um, do pipe up. So tell me a little bit about the idea behind the first video and perhaps the yeah. logistics of getting it done. Yeah, just quickly, that's just dog drool in my jeans. And that's, yeah, so that's... <laughs> oh my God, that's my anyway. life as well. <laughs> yeah. um, I mean, the first video was, the first couple of videos were, um, you know, well, the first three videos were sort of commentary on dogs, sort of aping a sports commentary. Um, the, the, I mean, they were obviously planned, uh, but then they happened pretty much as you see them unfolding. And that's the great thing about it. In particular, well, the, well, the first one was, you know, you know exactly how it's going to play out. So you can plan a little bit for what you're going to say during it, because, you know, you've seen it a thousand times before. And they don't, it's not as if Labradors one day decide to sort of take a little bit of food and then pause and read the papers <laughs> and then take another bit of food. They just, they just go at it. So you know exactly what's going to happen. Um, I knew that I was going to have to put Olive's bowl down first before Mabel's. 
um, because I was holding a camera and a phone at the same time. So you kind of know exactly what's going to happen, so you plan accordingly. The second one with the bone, um, that's just, again, a thing which happens every single day um, in this house. Olive will get something, Mabel will decide that that is the thing which she wants more than anything in the world. And eventually, Olive just gives up. It, it appears that Olive lost the bone there, and she did, but she really... She kind of does that every single day and she doesn't really care that much. It looks like she does. She looks very sad and it just played out very well. But then from then on, it was about trying to take it away from sports commentaries and take it into human situations and laugh at our own our own sort of uh, these things that we've made, like Zoom meetings and online dating or, as I say, whatever it might be, all the human conventions, putting dogs in those situations. And that's what I really enjoyed most about this year is, is I enjoyed the, the sports commentaries on the dogs, which got it all started. But then I enjoyed even more trying to be a little bit silly and creative and taking it into a, a different direction. So she's, she's, she's snoring gently into the mic. She's, 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 hang on a second. I'm going to try and do this without, without waking her. So I've, I've woken the Kraken, but she'll fall asleep in a minute. <laughs> Oh, so sweet. So, so sweet. Um, I really loved the Zoom video because, of course, I mean, I wasn't even, I don't think I was even aware of Zoom as a thing before the pandemic hit. And then oh. it became, for a little while, our lives. And we yeah. were doing, you know, pub quizzes and work meetings and all sorts yeah. of stuff. Of course, it makes sense that your closest associates, Mabel and Olive, may also want to communicate on that medium. But reading the book, that it was a little more complicated perhaps than it seemed to edit together that video. Tell me about how you went about it. It was. Mabel's looking confused now, just about <laughs> in general. I'm not sure what's going on. Where so, are my biscuits? <laughs> why don't you just settle down? No, she's she's less about the biscuits than than this one here is. This one here is maintaining a vigil for the biscuits. Ah, uh, um, yeah. And I, and, I, and I keep saying the word as well, which isn't helping, obviously. So, um, <laughs> sorry, yes, the Zoom, the Zoom meeting. Um, hello, hi, hi. <laughs> Hello, maybe later Ollie. on um yeah so the zoom one was obviously pretty difficult to do i mean it wasn't uh, some people may have thought that it was just a, just a zoom that i recorded but um that's just the artifice of it and uh how, how good the editing was of a friend of mine um i mean i i um edit it together and then a colleague of mine a guy called uh, tony maybe from from the BBC, he he puts the finishing flourishes on it to make it look like a, a zoom. I shouldn't be giving away all the secrets here in terms of that. But I think people would, I think most people would know that that wasn't an actual yeah. zoom. That, 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 that wasn't that wasn't an actual zoom meeting. No, so I, I I would record the two dogs separately, and then I'd put them together on a split screen, and then I would record my own while looking at them. And it took a lot of takes to to get right. I, I like, shouldn't be saying this at all. This is uh, this is no. I, what I'm what I mean, Kate, is that it was a zoom meeting which I recorded yeah. with the dogs. But the thing that's another thing I've enjoyed about the videos because a lot of them involve. You know, you think, I mean, even things like, as I say, building the flat pack furniture, it's, it's you know, spotting the, the, the joins if you can, um, or in the Halloween one, there's a join, but, you know, you might not be able to spot it. And it's good fun. It's good fun trying to edit the things <laughs> together. Um, I'm sure it is. It's absolutely <laughs> lovely. And now tell me a little bit about the response and how surreal it must have been to suddenly find you know, two of your greatest friends and companions uh, become world famous and have people getting in touch with you being like, you know, here's my pug. Can you commentate on my pug's outing for the day? And all the brands that got in touch with you. Tell me about the response that you've had and how that felt. Yeah. I mean, the reaction is extraordinary. And it's it's something that you, you, you know what, you think you know what happens when videos go viral, but the response is just astonishing. And you can't really, you can't really, cope with it um and that's you know it's, it's small troubles in a in a year like this to be, oh i'm struggling to cope with the response to a viral video but it's just it's um, <laughs> it's so overwhelming because so many people get in touch with you whether it's on twitter or an email address which i had on my twitter account and and it's the it's the, it's the first of all it's the lovely stuff it's the um you know people expressing the gratitude or just laughing and saying this is fantastic you know this made me laugh today i've been having a terrible day whatever it might be all the nice messages. But then there's a lot of, you realize there's a lot of sadness out there in the world. And that sort of comes to visit you as well, because people are laughing at it, but saying, I needed cheering up because 
my relative's not well or my friend's having a terrible time or I've been having a terrible time at work. And so you, you, you try and sort of process all of that and you, you can't remain detached from it because these people are sending you heartfelt messages and you want mm -hmm. to respond to them all as well because if someone sends you a nice message, you want to reply, but um, you find that you just you, you can't, you haven't got time to reply to thousands and thousands of messages. And then, of course, as you say, there's the there's the sort of silly side to it, the commercial side to it, which I decided quite early on that I was going to turn down. I, I turned down the the only one thing I did was for visit Victoria you know, in Australia yeah, and the, the 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 fairy penguins of Phillip Island Nature Park because it was first of all they they offered me cold hard cash but more importantly it was a beautifully <laughs> pitched idea for a tourism uh, body which you know tourism is obviously struggling in in Australia as it is around the world so for them to come up with this idea, which was a good idea, and to be able to commentate on penguins, which are um, comical, laughable, lovable creatures, oh, okay. then that was that was fine. But 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 to your sort of broader question about the reaction, everything was just extraordinary, a little bit too difficult to, to handle at times. Um, so it was, um, I, I turned out all sorts of um, advertising, uh, you know, suggestions. Come on, into bed here, come on. Into bed. Into bed. Olive's looking a little bit annoyed now because this is not how the morning usually pans out. So she's come to ask some further questions about what what's going on here because usually it would be it would be breakfast and then I've just said that word. Oh, um, okay. And then it would be a, a long snooze and then out for a walk and the snooze is not happening and she knows also that there are a couple of biscuits over there sorry yeah just um on on the um you get ads for uh, pet foods uh for all sorts of pet products and merchandising is a huge thing so people say can we have an olive and mabel calendar can we have um olive and mabel t-shirts or whatever it might be and i and uh, yes they would be i'm sure they'd be quite nice and if they're done nicely and i had a couple of offers well more than a couple of offers to do that kind of thing but i didn't want to a be seen to be that kind of grasping oh my goodness i must i must really rake in on olive and mabel but also i don't really want these you know these these clowns to be seen as commodities because they're just you know they're my they're my they're my dogs and that's yeah. um yeah that's the way we want to keep it they're our dogs and we, we we just love them as our dogs so i don't want to see them staring out from the you know somebody's baseball cap and they, make Mabel great again. Whatever it might be. Um, fair enough too. It's good that they've got good representation in you. Mm. Um, how do you think they've dealt with their fame? Do they have any idea or are they oblivious? Uh, well, I mean, they're, uh, Mabel lives in a, a constant state of oblivion. She is, um, <laughs> so I'm not sure, as I say in the book, I don't think she knows that her name is Mabel. I don't think she's aware of much, but um, no, I, I mean, on a very basic level, they are constantly now asked to do things by me in terms of oh, sit there for this <laughs> video or sit there for, or or doing this. This is a thing which they didn't do, but they no. come in here and chat. I've got studio lights here because it's rather gloomy, so um, they just sit here and uh, and do this, and they know they'll get a, a bit of a treat after it. But all they care about is that they are near their humans and they are near dogs. Mm -hmm. They just want to be warm and safe and fed and fed again and then perhaps fed some more and um <laughs> have a snooze so that's all they care about really <laughs> um tell me a little bit because uh, what i loved about the book is it is obviously about the videos and behind the scenes of the videos but you also go back hello beautiful creatures <laughs> <laughs> so that's, uh, that's this is welcome to welcome to radiator <laughs> radiator live on uh, booktopia <laughs> um but you also wrote beautifully about how they came into your lives and also you know you say they're warm and safe and snuggly now but they're not always sometimes they're cold they're in colder temperatures and having wonderful adventures so tell me about some of the things you do outside of olive and mabel's film career yeah i, I mean as i mentioned um earlier it's a, it's in the mountains of scotland i live in england but I, whenever i i can go back home to scotland as often as i can and go into the into the mountains with them and and it's usually in the winter i don't go near the mountains in the summer really um it's just into the snows and the quiet and the escape and the peace and and yeah it gets it gets very cold but uh you know i laugh at these comical creatures but they have um they have very very efficient coats um layers of coats 
Um, and uh, sorry, Oliver's doing something unpleasant. Um, you finished. <laughs> <laughs> Something not um, fit. Yes, yeah, so, no, it's not fit for not fit for uh, public, <laughs> public consumption. So it's uh, an an escape. That's what I escape into the mountains with the dogs. And again, that connection when you are in the mountains is just so so strong because you know the the whole connection between humans and dogs is that they see you as the pack leader and they 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 love you and they think that this person knows what they're doing and i'm going to stick with them because they give me food and they give me walks and this is quite a walk we're doing today but um and and so i don't know it just uh, it really does reinforce my uh, you've got the sort of uh, protective feeling of them i don't have children but i'd imagine that's what it is like you know you you want to look after them and especially mabel i mean all of us quite sanguine in the mountains but mabel starts to sort of ask questions about what this is all about and what we're doing and um it's not because she's distressed she's just it's, it's mm -hmm. a, a strange environment i mean she's having a whale of a time she's bouncing around like a like a, an absolute moron but um <laughs> but, and she, she's she's enjoying herself immensely but um but she does sometimes just come in and just check in on your legs well, she very rarely leaves my legs, actually. And she's just sort of saying, "Is this? are we okay here? And I say, listen, we're, not, we're okay, it's fine. Look at Olive, she's eating a dead bird, so we're fine. Um, <laughs> yeah, so, but I love it. absolutely love it in the mountains. And uh, hopefully, you know, not too distant future, we'll be able to get back up there in the snow. Um, I want to ask, because it's never occurred to me in my life that I might like to climb a mountain, particularly a really cold one or a really tall one. What appeals to you about it? What why do you love it? It's it is just that word the escape. It's um, hmm. an escape into the the silence. I mean, the the world just gets busier and noisier. And I'm I'm not um, an exclusive for Utopia. I'm not a massive uh, people person. I don't mean that, and I don't <laughs> dislike people on an individual basis. It's just sometimes I don't know. I just sometimes want to get away from from it all as we all do it's a very i mean not necessarily oh, yeah. in australia which is an entirely different proposition even though the population of australia is largely around the outer edge it's still a very roomy country as bill bryson once described it it's um whereas the the uk in particular england is a very crowded country and sometimes you just need to get away and clear your head and you know i just need to feel and hear the silence every now and again which is Silence is not a thing you get very often in the modern world. So when I go up into the mountains, I'll always just stop for a few moments, even when it's a, you know, the wind is howling and or the, the rain is coming down or whatever it might be. I'll just stop and I'll hear no other human made noise. And, you know, it's um, it's a thing which I think we all we all would treasure at some point in our lives. Yeah, I mean, it, when you put it like that, it sounds rather beautiful. Now, you have spent some time in Australia. Uh, I think your partner has family there, um, I believe. Yeah, uh, absolutely. Um, uh, yeah, in Melbourne, yeah, in Hawthorne. So um, every every winter, well, every, you know, in, again, in normal times, which we speak of rather wistfully, we would be yes. down there, um, yeah, just uh, spend a lot of Christmas and, uh, and a bit of January um, down in Australia. So absolutely love it down there. And it's when you get... Um, I think everybody gets seasonal affective disorder up here because it just again is so so dark. I think we get about half an hour of daylight once you get into December, and so to get down there and get the just the bright, the vivid blue, and uh, mm. it's it's just yeah, it's a wonderful again escape. I talk a lot about escaping. There's something that might be <laughs> There'll be some psychologists out there watching going, I see, right, he feels trapped a little bit. So. <laughs> I think that's ordinarily how I talk about television as my main escape. Yeah. <laughs> um, there was one particular because you have climbed some hills in Australia. There was one particularly well named mountain in Australia that I really enjoyed hearing about. Mount Disappointment, I think it was. Uh, yeah, but I haven't climbed Mount Disappointment. I feel I should. It sounds like my natural home, Mount Disappointment. <laughs> you just come and go, oh, God, that's, that's rather disappointing. Um, but uh, yeah, there are some great names in Australia. Mount uh, Mount Superbus, um, uh, which I read initially as Superbus because I thought Superbus. it was going to so did I. <laughs> but, but of course, it's not. But anyway, yeah. So I have climbed some some mountains. I mean, hills, whatever the definition is. Um, you know, between a hill and a mountain. Uh, I you know, go up into the Grampians occasionally in Victoria. So um, 
around you know the Halls Gap area and do Mount Sturgeon or whatever it is. Uh, is it Mount Williams? Or, um, anyway, some uh, yeah. So it's clearly I love the idea of uh, you know the early settlers as well hankering after uh, Scotland and saying these are just like the Grampians. Well, they're not just like the Grampians because <laughs> they're about fifty degrees warmer. But uh, yeah, it's uh, again, it's just it's it's getting out into the into the wide blue yonder and and i also like i don't know why i like a, a bit of effort as well so climbing up something is uh, is always enjoyable olive's yes. just yeah. she's just she's just buggered off she's gone she's, i should have closed <laughs> i should have i should have, I should have, I should have closed that door there i should have closed that door but she's gone through because she's had enough of this i could get her back <clears throat> i could get her no. back in a heartbeat because i've got a biscuit no. here biscuit exactly yeah. exactly and um <clears throat> Let's just let's just see. Hang on a second. Let's just see what ha let's just see what happens here when I go for this. Oh, Mabel's having a biscuit here. Would you like that? There we are. Oh, that, that's good. That biscuit, Olive. <laughs> biscuit, biscuit, biscuit. Oh, you've had yours. Oh, hello. There she is. Oh, there we go. There we go. Back again. There we go. All right. Good girl. Yeah. Predictable reaction. My hands just smell of biscuits. That's all it is. I haven't got any more. Sorry, right. Yeah. Anyway, yes, no, I'm, one of the great proofs of the world is that there is no end to a Labrador's appetite. No, exactly. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> all right, there we go. Uh, now you're just tell me my hands. a little bit about your decision to get Olive and then some years later, Mabel. Well, it was because, um, and we, we couldn't have dogs. Um, uh, my partner and I, because we were both working, and then um, right, okay, I'm just going to hang on to this end so you're involved. In <laughs> <laughs> you go, Whatever yeah. works. Yeah, exactly. Oh, I mean, honestly, the the, the tricks I use in filming. Um, I'm anyway, sure. um, so yeah, so the decision was uh, was made when we, you know, um, uh, just had a bit more time in our hands uh, and moved it out of London was the key thing as well. So um, because you know, I, I I I know people can have dogs in London and do have dogs in London, but it's just I don't know. I, a, a big city is not really a place to to bring up a, a dog, and certainly not a big dog. Anyway, I think you can have a, a small dog that you might occasionally have a, put a hat on in London. But um, <laughs> are you in London? I am. Yeah. <laughs> well, let's see. Let's see. Let's see the hat hat on dog. Well, I actually have done the same thing as you and uh, left the have door. You lost it? Have He's you lost a dog. If he returns, I will put the hat on. What, what's his name again? Sorry, I forgot. Bert or Bert. B Bertie. Bertie. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah. Uh, Actually, Bert has funny, gone. funnily enough, uh, I was interested to see that your one of your family dogs was called Mungo because we got Bert from Battersea in Old Windsor. Mm. And when yeah. we picked him up, his name was Mungo. Really? Oh, Mungo's yeah. a good name. I mean, it is a good name. We sort of we sort of thought, you know, new life, new beginning, new name. So we yeah. long and hard about it. And I, I campaigned campaigned briefly for Harry after Harry Styles and Harry Potter, but we ended up settling on Bertie. But Mungo is a mighty name. So you've had a number of good beasts uh, in your life. Yeah, there have been a lot of dogs, a lot of dogs in my, my life. So uh and that's a that's a healthy way to be, isn't it? You become just Oh yeah. Um, I don't know what to, you know whether that makes you into a dog person or whether you're just a. I think obviously some people just have a natural inclination towards dogs and animals, and perhaps that is nurtured by having. Uh, oh, it's gone again. And perhaps that is nurtured by having dogs as well as you grow up. Um, mm. But then, but 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 I do I do think, and we I do talk about it in the book about how important it is I think for youngsters to be introduced to dogs early on because. So it's sort of passed down the line from generation to generation. You see some parents who are wary of dogs and you think, I don't think you had dogs as a child. And then they pass on that fear or concern of dogs to their children. Absolutely. It just keeps on getting passed on. You've got to break that cycle by just throwing a, a German shepherd at the children. <laughs> some, maybe not a German <laughs> shepherd. Start them, start, them with a, start, them with a, start them with a gateway dog, like a, a little a Shih Tzu or something. A Shih Tzu. So, yeah. but, Let's Perfect, build our right. way up to um yeah so it's um uh, yeah I, but but i've had dogs all my life in the family just so so many of them um and again of all varying uh breeds and um but we seem to have gone towards slightly bigger dogs um 
uh, later in life. I don't think Labradors are big, but you can't both leave. That's I'm gonna. I'll, I will have to get them back in a minute. Because that's, just like, that's just unacceptable. Um, I don't know, but that's so typical because Olive's gone through there, and Mabel has gone. Oh my God, there must be something amazing through there that I'm yeah. missing out on. So because she is just totally led by Olive, um, which is I mean, she, and that's a terrible mentor to have. But Mabel just worships Olive. So if Olive goes somewhere, Mabel will eventually decide that that's probably the place where I should be as well. <laughs> and that's because um, Olive was your first mm. um, of two to, to arrive in your household. And then some years later, your partner and you thought, let's get Olive a companion. And so you got a teeny tiny <laughs> mobile. Tell me about that production and how that went. It went as as I think it, it goes most of the time when you introduce a, a new uh, younger dog to an incumbent dog and they say, what the, why, what, what's, what's, get, get off me, get off me, go away, this is my house, these are my people, I have no idea who you are, um, would you please leave? But then after a couple of days it was... It was fine. I mean, uh, Mabel was, as all puppies are to older dogs, I mean, enormously annoying, just constantly chewing <laughs> those r razor sharp puppy teeth as well. You know, if she wasn't destroying our hands, she'd be destroying all of his ears and face. Um, so, uh, uh, you know, all of us beautifully tempered with her as well. Mm -hmm. just, maybe just, a, you know, on the very first day, just give a little growl and a snap to say, I'm, I'm the boss here, so just behave yourself. But then after that, they, neither of them could be without the other now. So, Mabel, come on, happy come. come on. Bless them. Mabel. Best of friends. And now colleagues, co stars. No, that's I would, yeah, sorry. Olive, I wasn't. Olive no. thought she was being summoned for a biscuit. So, yeah, <laughs> I, they've got different temperaments as well. I like their different temperaments um, mm. uh, and the fact that they are. And, and that helps when you're when you're making little videos because you, you slightly maybe exaggerate those characters, but those are pretty much the characteristics of. Olive and Mabel. Olive is slightly steadier and more dependable, and Mabel is um is a bit of a buffoon, so uh, which works well. So come on, have you come. It's a beautiful mix of personality. Hello, girls. Oh, oh. Don't show that. Come on. The bottom shot. <laughs> <laughs> um, and we've got a couple of questions. A few questions yes. coming through from people watching us in Australia. So, um, I'm interested. I love, I love this first question. So Sue says are your dogs named after anyone in particular my dad's labs are called wills and kate oh right okay um <laughs> no i'm um wills and kate named after will smith and kate beckinsale uh, yes my, I'm my, <laughs> my, no they're not named after and olive was uh we, uh, again we do quite like the we do quite like the sort of more well, perceived to be more elderly ladies' names, two syllables, Olive, because she was, at the time of being a puppy, she was small and black, like a little Olive. And, yeah. <laughs> and then Mabel was just, um, Mabel, Mabel, yes, that's your name. See, see the, the one that she's brought through as well, Mabel's brought yeah. That through. So, yeah, see, see that? <laughs> I think. No? Anyway, um, Mabel, uh, I don't know, I just like... The name and then and then since we chose it i found seen mabel's all over the place i think it's quite a How popular name for a dog. Dog. So, quite a popular name for a dog and then there's a, a singer called mabel as well uh, so mm. i think mabel is and it, it means it's from the latin i think beloved uh mabel so that's you beloved little moron that you are <laughs> Oh, how sweet. Um, so the same Sue, Sue of the Kate and Wills dogs, uh, yeah. would like to know what your favourite sport to commentate or watch is. That's a good question. Uh, I mean, they're all the, the four main ones that I do are very different in golf, rugby, yeah. tennis and athletics. So they're all very, very different pace to them. I mean, golf kind of bumbles along like this and then we'll have dramatic moments. But it's it's a very different style of commentary to commentary on rugby, which is fast paced and really massive peaks and uh and then athletics would be you know building to a big crescendo during a race so uh and tennis is probably the most fiddly one to do because you're sitting there in a commentary box and the center court at wimbledon very small commentary box and you're sitting alongside 
Becker or McEnroe, whoever in there. McEnroe's a terrifying individual. So uh, I think it means to be. I don't agree. It's just his his gruff manner. So yeah, uh, yeah. The, the the yeah the art in in tennis commentary is just not for me as and because I'm not an ex player. I'm a a full on professional in inverted commas broadcaster. I'm just there to sort of steer things along and let the expert, the ex-player, uh, be the star and give the give the insights. So I'm just looking for a nice phrase. Uh, my my uh, commentary is just a nice accompaniment to the pictures. I think in television sports commentary, um, I think it's maybe slightly different in Australia and very different in America. It's just try not to get in the way of the pictures because mm. if you lost if you lost sports commentators from the world it would not necessarily be a poorer place you could still watch sport and enjoy it with the the crowd noise being a being commentary and you've got the graphics telling you the score or the umpire or the referee's mic so you don't necessarily need sports commentators i'm doing myself out of a job here but yeah. um, i think what you can do no. is you can you can improve the viewing experience by that much but you can ruin it by that much so just don't don't get in the way of it too much um but but my favorite one, um, I I mean, golf was my favorite sport growing up. But to commentate on, I think it would probably be rugby or athletics because of the pace of it, mm-hmm. and you, because you could you've really got free reign to to be quite um, quite shouty is the word I was looking for. Oh but, so, and it's the drama, it's the noise inside the yeah. stadiums, and that's what I've really missed. I mean, I've done some. So you know, in the Maracanã Stadium in 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 Rio, or whether it's you know in in Cardiff in front of seventy thousand under the roof there in the Millennium Stadium, the Principality Stadium as it's called now, and it's when you get those atmospheres and that noise, just pouring down from the stands, that mm. you realise um, how much of an interactive experience sport is, and when you see it now being played in front of nobody. You know, it is sport, but it's sport without all the sort of soul and joy and um, uh, atmosphere. So it's a little bit of an empty experience at the moment. And we're just hoping that we can get through to the other side of it so that um, spectators come back and provide that genuine atmosphere. Because it really is a a collective experience, sport watching. Mm, Yeah, absolutely. May we get back to that Um, in the not too distant future uh someone called ian says love your work how do you train the girls or are they in fact trained at all (laughs) they were trained well i trained them ian in a a very half-hearted fashion (laughs) um yeah i i mean we 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 did train them and certainly we trained so the thing is we trained olive um uh she's gone just i mean she she oh, could get into you. the bed she could get into the bed but she's just decided that it's just a chin a chin rest at the moment um yeah so we, we trained olive and we did her quite well one thing which which was very good in the early days was that while she was eating we would blow a whistle and so then mm. that conditions them and then so when we wanted to summon her in the future from uh whatever act she was up to on a walk you just blow the whistle and she'd come running like the, yeah so exactly good. so she so she just runs to you thinking yes yeah, it's, it's it's dinner time on the walk how amazing <laughs> <laughs> what is this it's not dinner time what did i come running over here for i hate you so much but i'm here so um and so we did we did training we you, labradors are very very trainable certainly black and, and yellow ones in particular and um so we didn't have to work too hard at it um, and Olive will largely do what we say, except when she's eating grass or doing, and then it's just so annoying. She will not move. And no matter how many times we tell her that the grass, if you eat this grass, it's not going to be pleasant for you. It's not going to be pleasant yeah. for me in 24 hours time. But um, she just says, well, I'll she take, will that, not hit. Will I'll not take that hit. I don't mind. Um, <laughs> but with training Mabel, we, 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 we were even less than half hearted with Mabel. We were quarter hearted. So she just does. She takes her um her lead from from Olive, so it's mm. just this it's even worse now. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So we've not been we've not we've been good owners, but not great owners. But they are they are pretty well trained dogs. Oh, I think you've been great. <laughs> often. Um, Morag would like to know who looks after Olive and Mabel when you're visiting Melbourne. Well, they go into Morag's a great name. 
uh, they that... go into good Scottish name. When um, so they go either to well, they used to go to a friend of ours, but she stopped um taking them after a while, not because of anything they did. I don't <laughs> think. Um, so they go to kennels. They go to very good kennels nearby. Um, I mean, kennels, you know, conjures up an image of a cold, dark, wet place, but it's 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 a really nice place, and they. They're in the same room together, and as long as they are together, I think they're okay. Uh, and the people there love them as well. So, um, go get away. Yeah, so they they have a nice sort of spa weekend or a couple of weeks or whatever it is when we're away. But that's the one downside about going away, uh, and you know, is that every I mean, when we're in Melbourne for three weeks or whatever, you just miss the dogs all the time. But again, yeah. you know, the family over there have dogs, so you just kind of adopt them for a bit. Yeah, exactly. And then you get a pretty sensational welcome when you arrive home. Oh, so I mean, and so as I mentioned um, at the start of this, I was away. I was just in uh, in Belfast working yesterday and didn't get there. So I was away for about a day and a half and came back last night and got in at two in the morning. And I mean, Mabel's only just stopped, you know, whining with excitement now. I recorded, <laughs> I recorded oh. most of it. And I'll put that. I'll put some of this into the audiobook, I think, because it's just the welcome in the morning is is something. But when you come back after a few weeks away, it's just ridiculous. It's as if the, all their prayers have been answered, and they just yeah, dance. You pretend for more. Yeah, they're, it's very they're just funny. dance around singing so, for for yeah, exactly. So. Yeah. It, uh... Okay, next question comes from Jane. What is your favorite memory of either or both of them together? Um, favorite memory, God. Probably a difficult to pick. I'm sure you have many. Yeah, there, yes, there there have been many. I mean, like, strange things from this year stand out, like being on stage at the Cheltenham Literary Festival and, and the Everyman Theatre there, um, and just seeing these two, you know, sim simple dogs. I don't mean simple as well; they are simple, but um, you know, just they're just, <laughs> they're just they're dogs. If there can dogs, be such yeah. a thing as just dogs, but they were walking on to rapturous applause in the the Everyman Theatre on stage, and and then just uh, just padding around, and 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 then coming out of the stage door afterwards, and and people crowding around looking for um looking for like photos rock and autographs and little and paw prints and their autographs. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So um, that's kind of the um, uh, strange memories of this year. But I think my favourite memories really are. Um, really are up in the mountains. I've had some amazing walks with them and ones that you'll just remember for, you know, into your dotage. So, um, yeah, lots of lots of memories with them, but not, no, no one particular one stands out. Mm. Yeah, I think life with dogs are kind of like, it's kind of like that. It's just a constant loveliness punctuated with wonderful welcomes home and good snuggles every day, but it's sometimes difficult to come up with, you know, a particular one. Yeah, it's just uh, constant. Yeah, they're they're constantly yeah. in your life. That's it. So it's, yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, but uh, yeah, there are so, there are a couple of um, special memories. But it's just as I say, my memory of them is just being with me through through my life. That's pretty much it. Yeah, and that's what they're good at. Just <clears> being there. <throat> uh, Fiona wants to know: Do Olive and Mabel listen to you commentating when you're on tour? Uh, no, I think they've been. Uh, I think uh, my other half has tried to make them watch in television, but they don't. It's like when I've tried to, when I've tried to FaceTime them or whatever it might be, um, they don't really go for it at all. It's they do things <laughs> by, by 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 smell, and that's how they you know recognize people. And yeah, so uh, you know a, a face appearing like this. I mean, if I could explain to to Mabel that I'm sitting beside her here, but also look, I'm in I'm in the laptop as well. Then she would rightly say, "I have no idea what a laptop is," and also, <laughs> how, how am right. I speaking here? <laughs> this is, um, yeah, so uh, yeah, no, fair enough. Um, let me see. We've got something. Well, someone called Coco Pops. Uh -huh. I imagine that's not their real name, but perhaps it is. Uh, would like to know: Are dogs allowed everywhere in Scotland? Are wild places mostly national parks? <clears throat> dogs aren't allowed, even good dogs. Um, it might be a real name. Coco could be a first name, and Pops is uh, yes, oh, uh, yeah, yeah. exactly so. Mister, Mrs. Pops, and daughter Coco. <laughs> daughter Coco. Um, sorry, I'll put your ears back. She doesn't mind. 
Um, yes, they're allowed everywhere. Um, just in certain areas, obviously, you'd put them on a, a on a lead. Um, you know, if they're cattle or sheep around. Um, but yeah, I, I'm very aware. Um, oh, she's very excited about something. She's off as well. We're dogless. Um, I'm very aware of bird life as well. That I don't like to to scare bird life. Um, um, I remember one video. Um, they've got a favourite swimming pond nearby. Um, pointing the right direction. Yeah, the swimming pond is <laughs> over there. Um, okay. and I, I did a sort of a mock Olympic opening ceremony uh commentary on them just going into this pond, and there was one person who said, "There we are, another irresponsible dog owner uh, scaring the bird life." I actually check every time they go to that pond. I check to see that there aren't little coots or moor hens or ducks in there and if the if the coast is clear then they can go in so um because I, yeah. you know I, I i love dogs but i i, I love all animals and i don't mm -hmm. I, I do see a little bit of uh, you know some do dog owners might just let their dogs do whatever and largely you know that's the way i operate with Oliver mabel but i'm very very careful not to upset any sort of ecosystem because there's far more to the animal uh, world than than dogs which brings me to my next question from Jan. Um, she wants to know, have you ever had any other animals? Um, cats growing up, yeah, and I do like cats, but uh, I go into some, some detail in the book about uh, cats and the, the different way they operate to dogs. Um, and also, again, they, you know, because people say, well, you have cats, you just have a cat flap in the door and they can go out. But I would be terrified about them just getting run over and that's happened to you know four or five cats in my life and I, I couldn't cope with that at all if I see no. a, a dead bird or a rabbit on the road I get upset so I'm uh, I don't think I could really cope with having a um, a cat I just live in in fear all the time mm, yeah I think that, and also, I mean personally I also find them sort of a little too aloof for my life well, you have to work a bit harder for the, the love of a cat, whereas the love of a dog is cheap and easy and bought with like biscuits. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And to be honest, I can't be bothered working for the love of a cat. I'll just, uh, I'll just, I don't want to have to uh, have to try too hard for the love. I, w I just want it to be there. And and oh, the moment right. it's not there, it's gone. It's they've they've gone. So uh, they'll come back. <laughs> We'll come back. I've run um, out of biscuits. Oh, you are back. Hello. Well, I'm back without one, even one, one of them a biscuit. Back. Do you need to go out um, or something? Is that what you're saying? I don't know. Well, I mean, it's good that one of them has come back because we've actually had a few questions come through for Olive and Mabel if you wanted to. Um, okay. Olive, you're listening, you're paying them. attention. So uh, the first one is, Mabel, with regards to your Zoom meetings, did you go to HR to lodge a complaint about your treatment? <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes, she did. She did go to HR uh, and she was talking to the human resources, uh, head of human resources. Is that you? After, <laughs> and then after a while, she realised that it wasn't the human, head of human resources, but it was just someone she met on a walk. And um, so that person said, I have no idea what you're talking about. And uh, Mabel said, well, it's about, you know, you're going to electrocute yourself. It's about Kevin the Doberman and the things he said. And uh, this person on the walk said, again, I have no idea what you're talking about. Would you like a biscuit? And then she forgot all about it. So, Oh, yeah, um, a biscuit, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, the you know, that, 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 that. <laughs> that Zoom meeting, that Zoom meeting, pretty much summed up the two personalities. That's what I liked about it as well, because all of just staring, staring into the camera, and she's pretty, again, pretty steady and dependable. Whereas Mabel, 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 she does, she does Mabel. get the job done, but um, but she'll she'll do it in her own way. Bless her. Uh, Sharon has a question for both of the girls. <clears throat> How is the online dating going? Uh, I mean, I. I all is, I think all is pretty hot in the dog world, to be honest. So she has no lack of suitors. I do think, I, I, I think, I think, I think they're both very handsome dogs. So oh, I don't absolutely. think they would. That I is. don't think they would struggle. I don't think they would struggle for suitors. But whenever, um, yeah, whenever they're on a walk and and uh, male dogs come across and um, try and make their overtures, then all of is she she'll just put them away brutally and they, they go away just. <laughs> Their confidence sh shattered by by this one here. So what? We're going to another side of it. Oh, that's, that's that's the less pleasant side of the room. But here we are. Oh, hello, Angel. 
Yeah, she, I mean, she no. doesn't need any romantic interest, perhaps. No, she so, doesn't. She's. Um, I don't know. I couldn't. Uh, people said, have you thought about breathing from them? I mean, it's too late now because they've, they've yeah. had the operation. What are you doing? What are you... Oh, she just wants a bit of tail base scratch. She loves oh, yeah. this. This is, a, this is the awesome. thing which makes her just utterly lose it. So, hang on a second. Yeah. <laughs> you do enjoy the tail base scratch. <laughs> oh, look at her face. <laughs> oh, no, she, she, can't, she can't help herself. With that. Oh. She doesn't like that because she, she doesn't like losing her dignity, do you? You don't like losing your dignity. Um, so, yes. Yeah, so, um, oh, now Mabel wants a bit of attention because someone is having attention. All right. Uh, uh, yes, yeah, so I've entirely forgotten what we're talking about there, but um, it was something online about, dating. Uh, online dating, yeah. I, Very important subject for the girls. I did enjoy. I did enjoy making that video. Um, yes. Um, so online dating. I mean, to be honest, you know, I mean, <laughs> online fun. dating would not be necessary for dogs, would it? They just, I mean, because they just let's say, right you want to hook up? Yeah, let's hook up. Let's get it on. Um, so um, I think things would be a bit simpler in dog world, although that's oh, why absolutely. they are. But that's why they are um, bizarrely related in that um, half aunt and half niece. So because they don't oh, need yeah, dating course. dogs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a bit of a funny di dynamic for hitting the yeah, town. Ex okay. Exactly. <laughs> uh, one last question for the girls. Oh, this one goes specifically to Olive. Are you upset that Mabel has sometimes been introduced before you? Yes, she has been. And uh, she just goes in a massive huff. Um, I I think, I mean, Olive is obviously, you know, the book is Olive, Mabel and me. It's always Olive and Mabel. Olive is the older one. She will always get top billing in that. Top billing, yeah. So in just, in, <laughs> just in the order it comes. But I do think that this this little clown here, um, I do think that she, I don't want to say she's the, the, quite often her facial expressions and her ears and her, her little nose and just this kind of stuff that she's doing just now just busying herself with a cloth bone. I think sometimes <laughs> that does endear her to more people than Olive. But I mean, and people say, Who, who's your favorite? I mean, all, the connection I have with Olive is is just unbreakable. It's so strong mm -hmm. as well. But I, mean, I, but I, I love them both. I, do, I genuinely yeah. love them both equally, uh, but they're very, very different. Um, but uh, yeah, I, I, I don't know. I, I, for me, it's always Olive and Mabel. But there's no there's no order of it. It's just um, yeah, entirely equal. Yeah, as it should be. Um, yeah. I will wrap up in a moment. Those are most of the questions we've had through for you and the girls. I guess the only question left is what is your plan next for Olive and Mabel and for yourself? Um, a long lie down. I think. I, I mean, I I want to keep making the videos, but it's it's. Um, it's ideas. People say I'd love a video every day or every week or whenever it might be. And but it's it's too much also, content. I don't, I don't want to. I don't want to do too many of them as well because you want them to be. You, you've got a sort of quality control as well. I would hope that when they go out there, they're still. You know, I haven't had. I would. I would dread the day when I put out a video and somebody goes, eh, "That's it's all right," but um, yeah. You know, uh, they, they've been okay so far, so I, I want to keep making them, but I want to keep making them well, but that depends on coming up with, with good ideas. Um, so who knows, maybe a Christmas special. Um, oh, maybe. that would be good. That, that would be good. That would be lovely. Well, we, we will all look forward to that very much. Um, yeah. So anyone watching, this is what the book looks like, Olive, Mabel and Me by Andrew Cotter. It is available on booktopia.com.au. Um, I, I and just to say, uh, interestingly, yeah. Kate, just on the, the, the American, mm -hmm. the North American edition, the USA and Canada edition comes out on the 1st of December. And on that cover, I have been cut from the cover completely. And it's just all on the table. That's so, so it's funny. The same, it's the same photo <laughs> that's taken, but it's just I have been erased from history, which I quite like as well. So, yeah, exactly. It just, so um, it's just you know, um, because I quite like being the sort of disembodied voice that just uh, appears to, because it's all about it's all about these dogs. It's all about their their silly faces. So that's probably the best way to leave it just with, with them. <laughs> Yeah, beauties. Thank yeah. you so much, both of you, and of course you, Andrew, for joining us today. It's been so lovely. Um, I look at them; they're just <laughs> heavenly. I hope you go and have some breakfast. 
Go and have a walk oh. and a snooze and a beautiful day. Thank you so, so much. And congratulations on the book. Thank you for being with All us. All right. Thank you, Kate. Thanks, everyone. Bye. Bye, bye everyone.